Hey, I'm Jeff Tidball from Atlas Games. I'm here with Seppi Yoon from Fight in a Box, Lisa Olson from Source Comics and Games, and today we're going to show you how to play Lost in Relay. In Lost in Relay, you're trapped in H.P. Lovecraft's most famous short story, The Call of Cthulhu. You and your doomed shipmates explore the strange Cyclopean ruins of Relay, resting place of the alien god Cthulhu. Can you win Lost in Relay? No, no one can. But you can lose, as the last player with cards in their hand will soon find out. So the first thing is everybody's going to get a hand of cards. In a three-player game, that's going to be six, but it's going to vary by the number of players, so check the rules out. After we've each got a hand of cards, we're going to all get five face-up escape cards. Those are going to come in later in the game. So right now, all you need to do is arrange these on the table in a way that seems mystically significant to you in order to aid in your escape. Now after you've got those set up, you're going to look at your hand and you're going to choose one of those to be your ultimate escape card. For your ultimate escape card, you're going to want to choose a number that is high, because those numbers are easy to play, or you're going to want to choose an event card. Those have an elder sign symbol on them, and those are ones that you can play at any time. So I'm going to take this one, and then you put that face down on the table as part of your array of escape and ultimate escape cards. Then we're ready to play. The goal is to get rid of your ultimate escape card. And to do that, you first have to get rid of all your face-up escape cards. But before you can even do that, you have to get rid of the cards in your hand. And before you're even allowed to do that, the deck will have to be empty. Basic gameplay is super simple. We'll go around the table, playing and then drawing back up until the end of the game. So there's a draw pile and a discard pile. When the draw pile's empty, you can play anything you want. After that, you have to meet or beat what's on top of the discard pile, or you can always play an event card. Now the other thing that's cool is that you can play cards in sets as long as they match. So since Lisa played a two, I can play a three, and since I have two threes, I can play them both at the same time. I draw back up at the end of my turn. Now the cool thing about playing card sets is that they can unlock special abilities. And special abilities don't even have to be on your playing of those cards, they can be on somebody else's. So for example, Jeff played the two threes, I can play this third three, which are then unlo unlocks this ability, which is play again. I'm going to then play this uh, Lost in Visions, which will flip the turn order, so it now is going counterclockwise, and then I'm going to draw. So since it's back to me, like I said before, you can always play an event card, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a Mighty Door. Now what that lets me do is pick up one of my escape cards before I could otherwise do it, so that's great. It will help me at the end of the game. The bad side is that I have to pick up the entire discard pile into my hand and then a mighty door leaves. And now that the discard pile is empty, I can play whatever I want, which is three ones, and then I draw back up. So one other super important rule is that if you ever can't play on the stack, you have to pick that whole thing up into your hand. So after Lisa plays three ones, it's Seppi's turn. I want Jeff to pick up this stuff because I think he'll be stuck with it. So I'm going to play this 10 and then draw a card. So unless I have a 10 or an event card, I have to pick that up, which is the case. So thanks, Debbie. Yeah. Sometimes an event card will stick around on the discard pile after you play it. Uh, this one lets me banish two cards from my hand, but I put it on there sideways so we can still see that number four because that's what Lisa will have to meet or beat while, when her turn is next. And I can do that with four sevens. That also gives me the special ability to banish the entire stack and play another card. And then I draw back up to six. After the draw pile's gone, if it ever gets to your turn and your hand is empty, then you get to pick up one of your escape cards to form a new hand. Once all of your escape cards are gone and your hand's empty, you get to pick up your ultimate escape card, and once you manage to get that out of your hand, you escape relay. Remember, this is Cthulhu we're talking about, so there's actually no winners. There's just one loser, and you don't want to be it. So there you have it. That is Lost in Relay. Well, thanks for joining us today. Have a look at the cards. It has lots of awesome powers that we have not told you about yet. So uh, explore that and have fun. Thanks for joining us. Don't be a loser. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs>